Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fairview Presbyterian Church. I'm the pastor here, the Reverend Emily Zyg Lindsay. It is good to be together this morning. Um, if you would take your pew pads along the center aisle and sign in and pass them on down while I go over some announcements, that would be great. Uh, thank you to everyone who came uh, and helped at the community festival yesterday. Uh, we welcomed over 125 community members, were able to have conversations with them, share about our church, share about some of the things we do and we offer to the community, uh, and that was just great. Uh, the weather, weather was beautiful, and we had a great time. Our annual harvest dinner isn't until October, but it is time to make the relish. Uh, so sign up in the lobby to help on Saturday, September 7th at 9 a.m. Uh, to peel and grind the ingredients so the relish can start to come together. Our fall rummage sale is Friday, September 13th and Saturday, September 14th. Uh, if you are sorting through kids' clothes as we head back to school and there's stuff that doesn't fit and it's in good shape, we'd love to take those donations. If you're decluttering your house in general, we'd love to take those donations. Uh, your help is needed sorting those donations and running the sale, and there is a big board with various ways to help at the rummage sale that is posted in the lobby. Uh, more details about everything we have going on at the church are in your bulletin, so please be sure to check it out. And now as God's beloved community, let us stand and greet one another this morning. As you find your way back to your seats, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. As we pause for the ringing of the bell, we have some very enthusiastic bell ringers ready to go back there, uh, and then to listen to a prelude by Nathan. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Good morning. Will you, will you please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Hear, O Israel, listen, O church. The Lord is God, the Lord alone. Hear, O people of God, for God calls you to, God calls you, God, excuse me, God, for God calls to you this day. Hear, O people of God, for God invites your presence in worship this day. Honor the Lord our God with all our soul. Hear, O people of God, for God has wisdom for you this day. We will worship God. the Lord our God with all, all our minds. Hear, O people of God, for God has work for you to do this day. It's serve the Lord our God with all his strength. Now let us remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, number one, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes we make, and about how well or poorly we care for others. Yes, please be seated. In this spirit, let us offer our prayers to God. Let us pray together the responsive prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord, you taught us to love God with all our hearts, that we love our family, friends, and comforts more. You taught us to love God with all our soul, that we devote our souls to the things we enjoy. You taught us to love God with all our minds, but we study our school books or computer programs more than we study the scriptures. You taught us to love God with all our strength, but we use our strength to compete with others. You taught us to love our neighbor as ourselves, but we neglect the need of others. Forgive us, Lord. Give us courage to keep your commandments in our hearts and live and obey them. Amen. Friends, God hears our prayers. God loves and values us, forgives what is past, and calls us to new discipleship. Thanks be to God. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. It is time for the children's time, and we are doing our backpack blessing this morning. So as we sing together where children belong, I'm going to invite all of the kids with their backpacks to actually meet me at the back of the church where Mr. Eric is standing up right now. No, no. No. All right, do we all have our backpacks on? Our bags that we brought with us? You brought your sisters too? That's awesome. We will bless that too. I am glad you brought it. Okay, can we line up here? We're going to parade to the front. Come here, sweet pie. Why don't you hold my hand? We ready? Here we go. Keep making a All right, check out all these backpacks that are ready for a new school year. Awesome. Okay, can we sit down? We're going to use both front pews here. We have lots of people this morning. Can you guys all take a seat? Maybe Luke and Jordan, you guys can find a spot here if we squish. Can we get Hayden in? Let's see. Can we scooch over? Let's get a seat for Layla. All right. 
We haven't had this many kids in a while because everyone's been going on vacation and here and there this summer. It's great to see everyone back this morning. How are we feeling about school starting? Who can name how they're feeling about school getting ready to start? Excited. What makes you excited about school starting? Seeing some friends again that we maybe haven't seen over the summer? Yeah, what else makes you excited about school starting? Meeting a new teacher, yeah. Learning more, getting to discover new things. Yeah, what, how else are we feeling about school starting? Because we can feel more than one thing. Nervous, what are some things that might make us feel nervous about school starting? Knowing that you're gonna be graded on things, yeah. Going into middle school, maybe you're transitioning from elementary to middle school or middle school to high school, that's a big deal. Being in a new classroom with a new teacher that maybe you haven't met before, that can make you feel a little bit nervous. Is there anything else we're feeling about the start of the school year, Jordan? Sad. What makes us feel sad about the school year starting? Summer vacation is over, yeah. So we're feeling all those different things about school starting and that's okay. But I, will, I want you to know is that when you go to school, God is still with you. God isn't just in the church here when we come together for worship on Sundays. God goes with us wherever we go. And that means God goes with you to school. You can remember that, okay? So I have backpack blessing tags. And this year they say, everywhere I go, I go with you. And the Y is capitalized because we're talking about God. So everywhere we go, God goes with us. And school is going to be one thing. We're starting back up in the fall, but I bet there's other stuff that starts back up in the fall. Does anyone play any sort of sport? Do some of those start back up in the fall or maybe they'll be later in the winter or the spring? What kind of sports do we have? You do gymnastics. Yes. Okay. What else do we do? Cheer, swimming, soccer, piano, cheer, cross country, basketball, baseball, wrestling and cross country, soccer. What else do we have going on? Skateboarding, soccer. I think you played, did you play t-ball or softball this summer? Yeah. Softball, cheerleading, softball and cross country, football, football, awesome. All those different things we go to, activities, sports teams, if you do Girl Scouts or you're part of like a language club at school or something else, God goes with us in all those places. So the back of your tag says at school, at home, at play, and sports and activities, God is with me. Okay, so we're going to pass these out. And you can, I'll give you an extra one for your sister there. You can attach it to your backpack and take it with you. Yep. There we go. You can put it on your bag. And remember, we also have some people here this morning who work at schools. So they're getting ready to start back up too. We have Mr. McNally who came forward with us because he brought his backpack too. Mr. McNally is a gym teacher. We have Mr. Tobolesky. Can Mr. Tobolesky stand up for a second? Teaches science at McDowell. Uh, Mr. Rohan works in a school. Yeah, Mrs. Nelson is at Fairview High School. And then we already saw Mr. McNally joined us for our backpack parade. All right. Who wants to run a tag? Can you guys hand the tag to Mrs. Nelson so she can have one too? Jordan, do you wanna run one to Mr. Tobolesky? Terry, can you go give one to Mr. Rohan? Awesome. Okay, I think we got everyone. We have some 
people who took some for siblings and friends that were sick this morning and couldn't be here. All right, so instead of you guys praying with me today, the congregation is going to pray with me, okay? Because we're going to pray for all of you in your school year. So I am going to say something like when you head back to the classroom, and then you're going to respond, God is with you, okay? So your line is God is with you, all right? And we are all saying those things to remind you and pray for you for this new school year, okay? So let us pray. When you head back to the classroom, as you see friends again and meet new ones, as you meet teachers and work with colleagues, as you go to sports and activities, and as you come back home at the end of the night, God is going to be with you this school year, and we pray that it is a great year. Amen. All right, you guys can grab your backpacks and your tags and head on back to your seats here. Let us pray. Lord, you come to us with words of wisdom and promise. Open our hearts and minds as these words are read. Help them to sink deep into our hearts that they may influence the way we live. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter six, verses one through nine. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you, to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is the story of God for the people of God. The Israelites have been on a rough journey through the wilderness, and it is not over yet. They have endured lots and lots of walking with cattle and children and possessions in tow. They have spent days praying for water before God made water spring up out of a rock. They have survived on weeks of only manna and quail to eat. We heard about that last week. The journey has been rough. The journey has been so rough that there have been nights of wishing to be slaves again. 
slaves under Pharaoh's harsh rule. And that's not the only crazy thing the Israelites have done. The Israelites have also worshipped other gods. They built a golden calf and bowed down to it. When Moses was gone consulting with the Lord for too long, they wondered about worshiping the gods of sun and rain and prosperity when the Lord, their God, had them wandering still through the wilderness. Moses has had the difficult job of reminding the Israelites of the Lord, their God, the one and only God they should worship and follow. God has provided many rules to help with the following part. The book of Leviticus in the Bible is full of them. While we conveniently skip over those pages in that book, when we get bored of those rules, the Israelites had to listen to them be recited by the priests as they taught them to the people. It was a lot to take in. And so God summarized it all into a shorter list. The Ten Commandments were briefer, only ten of them. And plus the Ten Commandments were written down on stone tablets. But then Moses summarized it all even more simply. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Love God with everything. Start there, Moses told the people. Start with this one truth as you build your lives in the promised land. Start with this one command and know it deeply and follow it faithfully. Remembering one command was easier than recalling hundreds or even 10. But how were the Israelites to live it out? How were they to love God with all their heart and soul and might? The passage lists some ways. First, it says, keep these words I am commanding you today in your heart. Second, it says, recite them to your children. Third, it says, talk about them when you're at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you rise. And finally, it says, bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So what did those commands mean? What did it mean to do those things, to live into loving God? So first, they kept the word of God in their hearts because the Bible wasn't written down yet. There were no storybooks or devotionals about God. They were living God's story and God was speaking directly to them. And so they remembered God's words as part of their family history. The stories, the ideas, the commands were all passed down through oral tradition. It was an important family story and faith story that got stored in their memory and in their heart. The same way we would remember that story about Uncle Joe at Thanksgiving or the way our cousins come to visit us in the spring. In that same way, they remembered these stories. Because it was an important family and faith story, the Israelites told it to their children. They passed the command of God along to their sons and their daughters so they would know who to worship and how to live in the promised land. Love God with everything. I imagine it got repeated a lot, as sometimes needs to happen with children. When you're teaching them, repetition is good. Love God with everything. And while the command was being repeated, it was being shared outside of the holy worship space. The Israelites shared it with their children in their homes, in their tents. They talked about it as they wandered through the wilderness while they were walking. They brought it up around the breakfast campfire and before tucking kids into bed at night. Their life was on the road at this point. 
And so any teaching they would have done would have been flexible. Finally, there was the practice of literally binding God's word to the body so it would always be present with them. On little tiny scrolls of paper, small pieces of God's word were written down, like the command to love God with all your heart and soul and mind. And then they were rolled up and put into little boxes, and the boxes were bound with twine on their foreheads, kind of like a headlamp, or they were bound to the wrist, kind of like a big watch. And in New Testament times, these little boxes with scripture inside were called phylacteries. Something similar was created for homes. The command from Deuteronomy was written down and rolled up into a cylinder holder called a mezuzah. And that mezuzah was attached to the door frame. And so every time someone entered or exited the home, they would see the mezuzah that had that scripture rolled up inside of it and be reminded that they were supposed to love God with everything, with their heart and soul and might. It's interesting to learn about mezuzahs and phylacteries, or at least I think so. But how do we live out this command to love? Because we don't wear phylacteries on our arms or on our forehead or put mezuzahs on our door frames. So how do we do this? Well, we too can keep the command to keep scripture in our hearts. If we get to know pieces of the Bible so well that we can recall them, that they're just part of our memories. I'm not talking about whole sections of scripture like I shared last week for the scripture passage. I'm talking one short verse, one short promise from the Bible. Maybe like one from Matthew that says, God says, remember, I am with you always. Maybe that's something we can store in our memory or the command to love your neighbor as yourself. Maybe that's something we can store in our memory and always have with us. In the summer of 2015, Rodney and I went on vacation to the Great Smoky Mountains. And as part of our vacation, we zip lined through the mountains, which was really incredible. One of our guides on the trip found out that I was a pastor. We went about eight different zips, and so everyone would go, and we'd gather back on in the next little holding platform, and we'd go again. And in the process, we were talking with our guides, and he discovered I was a pastor. And at one point during this three-hour tour, he asked me, what is your favorite Bible verse? <clears throat> There's a lot that I like, but one of my absolute favorites is Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. And that's the one I shared with him. As someone who loves the great outdoors, he really appreciated that verse. He said there's nothing like relaxing at the top of a mountain and enjoying the beautiful view and thinking of the one who made it all. I agreed with him, that is pretty awesome. And there are other reasons that I like that verse and keep it in my heart. When the unexpected happens, when difficult things occur, I can recall, be still and know that I am God and remind myself that God is in control. When things are hectic and my week is jam packed, especially a week like last week and this week as we get ready and we go back to school, I can recall, be still and know that I am God and know that it's important that I rest too. It's also possible for us to recite the story to our children, to the next generation. And that is some of what we do here in worship. They hear the stories too, and they hear the stories in Sunday school and they start to know the stories as well. But these stories need to be shared not just on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week, and that's what it means for us to take them with us. So they are there when we are home and away, when we lie down and when we rise. 
And finally, we can take the scriptures with us too. I said, we don't have phylacteries and we don't have mezuzahs, but we passed out scripture on backpack tags this morning and kids attached them to their backpack. And they can be reminded everywhere I go, I go with you. I go with God. And it cites Psalm 139 for that verse. There are multiple places it appears in the Bible. A version of it is also in our scripture reading from Deuteronomy. When you lie down and when you rise, think of me. And so we can attach something like that. And when we glance at it at the end of a hard day or when we're opening up the bag to do homework, we can remember God is with me. And we have that story with us. The command to love God with all of our heart and soul and might guides us as we follow God in our day-to-day -day lives. May we take that command to heart. May we store God's word in our hearts. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 271, Standing on the Promises. Would you please stand? You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, you alone are holy. Teach us to worship you with all of our heart 
and soul and mind and strength. Help us to love one another as Christ loves us. Help us to embody your great commandment, loving and serving you with all that we are, loving and serving our neighbors as ourselves. Protect the people of this and every nation. Deliver us from warfare, famine, or flood. Establish your peace and justice in every place. Help us all to teach the next generation your way. Help children to grow in faith and love. Watch over them as school starts back up again. Trusting in your presence, we lift up to you those who need to feel your presence more right now. We pray for Edie and her continued healing. We pray for Pam and her surgery tomorrow. We pray for Terry and his continued healing. We pray for Danny and his new treatments. We give thanks for birthdays for another year and we celebrate with Emerson, Sarah and Kelsey. And we give thanks for new life uh, as we welcome baby Rose. We give thanks that you hear all of our prayers, whether they come to you in the form of complaints or tears, whispered sighs or loud cries, whether we have shared them aloud this morning or held them in our hearts, we are grateful, Lord, that you hear them all. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways that we keep God's word in our hearts and live it out in our lives is through sharing God's love in Belize. We have a partnership with Pathlight International, a nonprofit, and Kushlin Ha, a school in Belize. We have been to Belize multiple times in the past decade, and we are planning a trip for next summer, June 2025. And so here's a portion of the video that was made after our trip in 2023. Uh, which includes some background information uh, about our partnerships and previous trips to Belize. So let's watch. Hi, I'm Emily Zyg Lindsay, the pastor at Fairview Presbyterian Church. On Monday, July 10th, 2023, a team of 13 from our church departed for an eight-day mission trip to Belize. The team included church members and former youth group members who are all excited to deepen our ongoing relationship with our two partners in Belize, the school, Kushlin Ha, and the nonprofit, Pathlight. 
Cushlin Ha is a primary school in Belmopan, Belize, teaching students in kindergarten through eighth grade. Pathlight empowers children in Belize to receive a quality education, break free from poverty, and reach their God-given potential. My name is Jake Tobolewski, and I've had the privilege of being part of Ferry Presbyterian Church's Belizean Partnership for the last 10 years. I'd like to give a really brief history of the partnership to give some context to how this latest trip came to be. In 2013, a team of 31 people from Ferry Presbyterian Church went to Bailey's. And all sorts of different things kind of happened on that trip. Um, a portion of the team set up a makeshift eye clinic in a village surrounding Belmopon. Another part of the team worked at the public hospital in Belmopon, doing some roofing repairs, uh, interior and exterior painting, and cleanup of the grounds. And yet another portion of our team set up a vacation Bible school style day at Cushlin Hog Government School and interacted with scores of children from the Maya Mopon community. It was here at Cushlin Hall where the partnership in Belize really started to take shape. We had the opportunity to interact with teachers at Cushlin Hall who, who, are, who are in their very last week of the very busy school year, but were so incredibly gracious to us. Their incredible passion resonated with many members of our team, and we felt called to cultivate this relationship. So in 2014, a team of five members of the church returned to Belize to build relationships with Cushlin Hall and begin to sort out how to effectively handle the logistics of a long-term international mission project. It was on this trip that we first began working with Pathlight International, a nonprofit organization that was focused on education in the same area of Belize that we were working in. In 2016, another small team of church members left for Belize, but were thwarted by a hurricane and had to turn back after reaching Atlanta. Not wanting to lose the opportunity, we were able to fly Charlene, the principal of Cushlin Hall, and another teacher, Maria, to Fairview. And we learned so much more about Cushlin Hall's vision for the future and their desire to really become a community school. In 2018, we partnered with Pathlight once again, taking a team of youth and youth leaders. Uh, during our time in Belize in 2018, the group worked on in two teams. Uh, one team worked at Cushlin Hall, replacing floorboards and railings and doing some painting work. And the other team worked at St. Michael's School in the village of Las Flores, working on a new classroom building. And that's a very brief history about how Fairway Presbyterian Church, Cushland Haw Government School, and Pathlight International have become partners in this long-term project for our church. In order to understand Fairview Presbyterian's involvement and mission work in Belize, it is first important to understand. So there's going to be an informational meeting about the 2025 Belize trip on Sunday, September 22nd, following worship. Uh, you can also contact myself or Shannon Sanders, who are going to be the trip leaders for 2025, if you have any questions. As we head back to school in our country, Belizean students and teachers are also heading back to school. As our teachers have had days of in-services and preparing their classrooms, teachers at Cushlin Hall Primary, Primary School have done the same. This spring, Liani, the student that we sponsor, graduated from high school. And so as our students have packed their bags and prepared for a new year, Liani is preparing for her next chapter. This fall, she continues her education at the University of Bailey's, where she is studying pre-med science. We are so proud of Liani and all she has accomplished already. She is driven and determined and smart and wants to make a difference in her country. Liani is so grateful for our sponsorship because it kept her in school past eighth grade. After eighth grade, school is not free in Belize. And so most students drop out after eighth grade. But with our sponsorship, she was able to remain in school and graduate from high school and continue on to college. Your offering helps us to support Liani and her studies. So thank you. Together, we share God's love with others because love does grow here.
Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many gifts and blessings that you have given to us. With joy and gratitude, we return a small portion of those gifts to you. May they be used to carry out your work and further and strengthen your kingdom in this church, in this community, and around the world. And may they bring glory to your holy name. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, number 498, Peace Like a River. We have got peace and love and joy in our hearts. May we also hold God's promises in our hearts. And now may the God who loves you take delight in your living. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. And may the God who sends you send you now with great joy. For the very one who created you and redeemed you goes with you still. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.